that would keep this message from coming forth tonight. Lord, speak your word through uh, Brother Fred. Let the river flow out of him in the name of Jesus. And Lord, let us have open hearts to receive your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The, the title of the message tonight is Learning Through Supernatural Impartations. And this message is different than uh, some others because I, I wanted to explain to you what we tried to do in these meetings and uh, get your feedback and, and uh, about uh, the way we're conducting the meetings and, and uh, what, what would be helpful to you. Uh, it's very important uh, that we meet together and let the Holy Spirit move among us and that's where we uh, have impact when we let the Holy Spirit move and, and reveal uh, Jesus to us. And uh, when we look in Acts chapter 4, verse uh, 13, <clears throat> it says that the, the, the people saw John and Peter and they recognized they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. There was just something about being with Jesus that had really taken these two men who otherwise would have just been ordinary people. They would have just been fishermen, but just being with Jesus, they showed such confidence, such boldness, such courage, such power. And, and it was all about being with Jesus. And the same thing can happen with us uh, today, that, that it's not just because of Jesus, because when you look at Jesus, he said, I can do nothing of myself. That's John chapter 5, 19. So uh, he didn't do any miracles. Uh, he didn't teach uh, the multitudes or the disciples until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, you might say, well, but he was the son of God. Yes, he was the son of God, but he laid all of that down so that he could come to the earth and operate as a man filled and immersed in the Holy Spirit. And, and so that he could model the way that we can live our lives on the earth. Well, we are uh, men and women filled with the Holy Spirit, and we can do what Jesus did because he said in John uh, chapter 14, verse 12, he that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do, and greater works than these because I go to my Father. So what he's saying is we can do anything he did. A and the thing that he did was to impact the disciples. So he chose a few people. 12 people, and he worked with them for three years. That's a pretty short period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, just because he had been with them, their lives were changed. A and that's the basic model that we follow, that Sherry and I follow. How do we impact people? Uh, we impact people uh, like Jesus. We try to impact people like Jesus. We try to teach, uh, to teach people like Jesus would teach them. We build relationships. Relationships are the bedrock of everything we do. Amen. They're very important. That's where we grow in love. That's where we have life. That's where uh, God joins us. And then we uh, share uh, what the Holy Spirit is doing among us. And so the message tonight is about learning, about how is it that we learn? How do Sherry and I teach people? What, what is our uh, motivation and what is our the way we operate? Well, it's by the Holy Spirit we model Jesus. We try to follow the model of Jesus and we impact. And so uh, I, I've never really had this uh, discussion with you, but I think it's important for us to talk about uh, what you can expect from these meetings and and uh, mm -hmm. how uh, how will these meetings affect you and 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 what is your responsibility in these meetings? 
and, and I would love to hear from you tonight uh, what, what you think these meetings uh, mean to you, what, what you've received from these meetings. What, uh, do they need to be different uh, than the way they are? We try to follow the model of Jesus and, and impact the lives of people. You know, Jesus wasn't the only one that did that. You take uh, the Virgin Mary, uh, she went after she had uh, the Holy Spirit come upon her and Jesus was implanted in her. Then she went to see her cousin, her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth. And when she greeted Elizabeth, the baby in Elizabeth's womb, which we know now as John the Baptist, uh, he leaped in her womb and was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what happened with that? Well, what Mary was carrying, which was Jesus and the Holy Spirit, impacted what Elizabeth was carrying. And, Ooh, hallelujah. And, 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 and the baby or what she had in her was filled with the Holy Spirit. And so what we uh, try to do in these meetings uh, is, is to let the Holy Spirit flow so that we can be like Jesus, uh, that we all can uh, teach and learn like Jesus and his disciples. Uh, because it said, if you believe, you can do what Jesus did. And so we try to follow Jesus. That's, that's our model. That's the, the model that we try to follow. And, and I want to give you an example of how the Holy Spirit has flowed through Sherry and I over the years to impact a person. Um, and, and the example I want to give, I could give you a lot of examples, mm -hmm. but I want to give one example. Uh, and it's one of our spiritual daughters now. Uh, her name is Renee. Renee Davenport. And uh, so Renee uh, went through school. Uh, she was an orphan. And uh, she went through school and basically, our teacher said, well, you can't learn. You, you, there, you never learn. You can't learn. You don't have the ability to learn. So they put her in alternative classes. Uh, and they did that year after year. And basically, uh, they thought she could not learn. And uh, well, they, they said that she had disabilities. OK, so uh, she went through life like that. And uh, then she grew up. She did not graduate from high school, and basically, they said, the teacher said that she could not learn, okay? And then uh, when we met her, she was a grown uh, woman, and she had three children, and she had a part-time job. I'm just using this as an example of how we have impacted a person, one person. I'm just using this as an example. I could have used others, mm -hmm. okay? Now, we met her. She had three children. She had a part-time job. She was uh, at a school crossing. She worked as a school cross guard, which is just a few hours a week. And uh, that's, that's the only income she had. And she lived in uh, low-income government housing. Okay, so she started coming uh, to the mission, and she started coming around us. And, and the Holy Spirit began to impact uh, Renee. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine she's as a grown woman, has three uh, young children, and had never learned anything. But the Holy Spirit, see, just being in the presence of the Holy Spirit, she began to change. There was a change in her. It would change her whole attitude, change her whole perspective. Uh, and, and we just taught her like we teach you. And what happened, she decided she wanted to go to college. Now, this is somebody who had never been able to learn. She decided she wanted to go to college. So she uh, took the necessary uh, uh, programs to, to get into college. Uh, and she went through college and she was an A student and she graduated with honors. Mm -hmm. Now, that's quite a bit different than what the public school teachers had said about her. That's right. But see, she had had joined herself to us, we began to teach her like we teach other people, like we teach you, like we teach in these sessions. So tonight I'm trying to explain what happens in these sessions 
and how to get the most out of them. Okay, so she became an honor student in college, total change in her life because she had connected with us and the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit used us in, in her life. And I'll just give a, a couple of examples. Sometimes she'd get very depressed yeah. because she had three small children, didn't have much income. And uh, we'd have, a, a let's say, a prayer meeting where Sherry would go over there and find her still in bed. And Sherry would uh, get her up out of bed and get help, her dressed, help her get her dressed and, and then bring her down and uh, to the prayer meeting. And then she would she would really change. Um, she's a very powerful woman. So she she is an anointed, and now she's a minister of God. She has been Amen. ordained by a major denomination, uh, but she continues to be our spiritual uh, child, our spiritual daughter, and uh, even her children are related to us as well. We're so we love that family, and I just use that as an example of how by the spirit of God that operates in us and in you, uh, that, that incredible things happen. And, mm -hmm. and the way I'd like to describe it, uh, it is learning, but what kind of a learning is it? Well, it's learning where the spirit is, uh, making supernatural impartations. Mm, hallelujah. And, and so in these meetings, what I'd like you to realize that you bring the Holy Spirit and we bring the Holy Spirit and we try to function like Jesus would function with his disciples so that the Holy Spirit can flow among us and teach us things. He's the teacher. Yeah. He's the teacher. And even as we select the subject to be taught for us to teach uh, each week, it's unique for you. We're we're asking the Lord, what do what do you need? What do you need to know? What do you need to hear from the Holy Spirit? Uh, this is a place uh, where this is not about fixing the problems because Jesus took away all of your negativity, all of your all of those problems were nailed to the cross. And so that was Ooh, what, hallelujah. that's what Jesus did. He took away all of your negativity, mm. all of the things of all your past, all the, all of the sins, failures, hurts, heartaches, all of that was nailed to his cross. Hallelujah. And so what are we trying to do? And not to try to fix you, but we're trying to help you see where God is taking you, what God wants to give you. God has great and mighty things for each of you. He has promises for you. And we're here to help you walk in what God has for you. That's, that's, our, that's our part. Mm -hmm. And so what I see uh, that, that we do, kind of an overall, uh, if I put a title on, on it, would be relational learning in wisdom relational mm. because we're together this is not just about see i could if this was a different way i could just send you a book and say okay read this book mm -hmm. or i could just send you some notes and say this, read these that's notes nuts. these notes are all you need but that's not i don't think that's what you need because that's not the way jesus operated it was a releasing of the holy spirit see he said in John 5, 19, he could do nothing of himself mm -hmm. is by the Holy Spirit. So what he did on the earth was by the power of the Holy Spirit. So as he discipled people, he was doing it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and he tells us in John 15, 5, that we can do nothing of ourselves. Hallelujah. We have to abide in the vine. We have to abide mm -hmm. in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so let the Holy Spirit move through us. And so the only way we can do anything, the way, only way I can do anything, the chair can do anything, you can do anything, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit as we abide in Jesus. And, and so these meetings then uh, are, are not a typical kind of meeting. Mm. This is where we want the Holy Spirit to move. We've prayed about it before we get here. We, we've prepared. Mm. We've, Sherry and I have talked about uh, what it is that 
the Holy Spirit wants to teach you on a particular Tuesday night. We have we have sought the Holy Spirit. We have prayed about it, and, and he's led us in a message, and even this message tonight to help us understand what these meetings are about. Uh, how And I wanted to verbalize them. Uh, when we started uh, the Zoom meetings, we started them in 2018, it was hard for me even to think about how to explain what we were going to do but, but over time, these meetings uh, have grown. And, and, and now I believe that, that uh, the Holy Spirit has given me a vocabulary to explain what we try to do on these, in these meetings. And, and, uh, but I also want to hear from you tonight uh, what you think about these meetings, what you get from these meetings, what you would like to see uh, in these meetings. But I see them very much like Jesus and his disciples, mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a relational learning in wisdom. Now, wisdom, of course, we know that the wisdom that is from above, which is James 3.17, well, it's pure, it's peaceable, Hallelujah. it's gentle, it, it's full of mercy and mm -hmm. full of fruit. So that's, that's what we're trying to do is work on wisdom, receive wisdom, because if we have God's wisdom, we'll know how all of our needs will be met, and we'll know God's perspective on any issue, so, mm -hmm. you know, Proverbs uh, 8, I believe it is, it says, wisdom is the principal thing, that's right, it's the main thing to yeah. get, get wisdom, and, and so that's, that's what we're about in these meetings it's about wisdom the wisdom that is from above and and the good thing about this wisdom we can we see in James 1 that we can ask for wisdom if any person lacks wisdom let him ask and God will liberally mm. give it to us and so wisdom is definitely what we need we need the wisdom that comes from above because it's pure it's peaceable, it's mm. gentle, it's full of mercy and full of glory to God, fruit. Hallelujah. So you want to be fruitful in your life? Yes. Get wisdom, get wisdom. Mm. It's the principal thing. We want to get wisdom. Hallelujah. Okay, now Hallelujah. I, I have four points I want to make. Okie dokie. This is how <laughs> it, you can receive wisdom in these meetings four points. The first one is rest. Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor, isn't that us, who labor and are heavy laden, and you've got a big burden, we've got things we're carrying, isn't that us? Yes, that's all of us. We all have things to mm -hmm. do. Well, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. rest. And then he says, and learn of, of me. me and learn of me okay Woo, so glory so this this is a way how do we get this wisdom and in these meetings how do we get it one thing and then i believe this is the first thing we have to come into rest and now what do i mean by that be focused on these meetings mm -hmm. be uh, have your heart prepared for these meetings be at rest don't come in here uh, and be distracted and 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 have all of these uh, full, chaos yeah full or, of worries a chaos and anxiety and worry around you you've got to come to rest if you're going to learn now you can come to this meeting in any situation uh, no matter what kind of situation you're in but he said if you're going to learn you bet you have you to be at rest. Into rest and so that's what these if you want to be successful in these meetings and receive what the Holy Spirit has for you through these meetings, then be at rest. When you come in here, be at rest. Be ready to receive mm. because we believe that every time we meet, there will be impartations, Partation. supernatural impartations. Now, there are some times that we come together and the Holy Spirit specifically talks to us and gives us direction about imparting a particular thing. Now, we can only impart some particular thing if we have it. 
if we received it. See, if, if he were to say, well, tonight I want you to impart peace to people, uh, then the only way I can impart peace to you is that I have to receive it beforehand. Mm -hmm. If I don't have something, I can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and so the first thing then, when you come in here, if you want to be, uh, if you want to receive what the Holy Spirit has for you each meeting, when you come into the meeting, the first thing is to be at rest. Don't be distracted. A lot of people, they, they come into a meeting and they're distracted. And they and they don't get anything. And and I've done that myself. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been uh, things have been chaotic in my life, uh, uh, and I've gone into a meeting, and and I can hear the words, and I can know the words are are sweet words, are nice words. I can hear them, but when I walk out the door, I have no clue what the words were. That's right. So if I'm chaotic, there's not going to be any learning. I'm not going to learn anything. And, and so when Sherry and I come into this meeting. We have to be at rest, and the way for you to receive the most from the Holy Spirit is to be at rest your second, yourself. So the first one then is to be at rest, and that's just a peace and focused on what, what we're doing. The second key to this learning that we're talking about tonight, the second key is to believe. You have to believe that the Holy Spirit has something for you. That's in right. These that's right. Oh, and oh. believe what's being said. And, and, and receive it and believe it. Believing, you know, um, Hebrews 4, verses 1 through 3, says they didn't have rest because they didn't mix faith, faith with what they heard. And, and, and so they didn't learn. And so it didn't profit them. They didn't learn anything. Now, this is talking about a whole nation. Mm -hmm. That all of Israel, it, it, it was a reference to the Old Testament. And he said, all of Israel, they didn't learn anything. But, but they heard the word of God. It was preached to them. But they didn't learn anything. It didn't benefit them. It didn't profit them because they did not mix faith with it. So what I want you to know is that these messages and what we share here will profit you only if you believe, right. if you believe it and receive it. And you put your faith, you mix your faith. See, Sherry and I, we're going to put our faith with what we say. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to learn, to receive it and to, re to learn and, and to receive what's being said, you've got to mix your faith. You've got to believe. You, you've got to put your faith out there. So there are two, two things then. You have to be focused. You have to be at rest. And you have to mix faith with what is being said yeah. and, and say, I believe that. You know, sometimes you could say, amen. Amen means I agree with what is being said. I agree with the word of God. Now, you don't need to amen if I tell you a baseball score uh, because an <laughs> amen is to agree with the word of God. It's not to agree with a baseball score. It's not uh, agree with uh, some political opinion. It, uh, the word amen, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, it is about agreeing with the word of God. Amen. And, and see, the promises are yes and amen. So somebody has to say, yes, this is, these are the promises. And then you say, amen. And then you come into agreement. When you say, amen, then you're coming into agreement. Then you can receive that. Uh, but you can say, well, no, I don't agree with that. But, but you don't receive it. Yeah. And so what, what we're talking about tonight is learning. Learning uh, wisdom from above. Uh -huh. And so this is not my wisdom. This is not natural wisdom. This is wisdom from above. And so you have to be at rest and you have to believe. Now, the third one is about yielding to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, Revel mm -hmm. uh, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, uh, Paul was writing and he said, I urge you, I beseech you, 
to present your body as a living sacrifice. So that's that's yielding over to God, yielding yourself to God. It's just your reasonable service. He, he said, this is just reasonable. This is not absurd. This is not mm -hmm. radical. This is just reasonable. Yield yourself, um, present your body as a living sacrifice. Then you will know the will of God, the acceptable and the good and the, the perfect, perfect will, will of God, God. And, be trans and your mind will be transformed. That's learning. See, when your mind is changed, yes, yes, that's yes. your that's when you learn. And how do you learn? You have to yield to the Holy Spirit, like these two verses say, Romans 12, verses one and two. You have to present your body. You have to yield. You have to yield to God. You know, Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple. You've got to lay down your life because I've got a higher life for you, but you've got to lay Hallelujah. down your life. Well, that's the same concept. here. You've got to lay it down if you want to learn. You, you've got to lay down your will and your uh, the way you see things and the way you know things are. And, and you, you've got to yield yourself so that you can have your mind mm -hmm. renewed so that you can learn the wisdom that is from above. So how do we oh, learn yeah. the wisdom that is from above? We have to lay down our life and pick up the higher life. That's three. That's number three. We have to yield uh, to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now the fourth, and these are just four points I'm going to make tonight, that these four things will help you learn in these sessions. And the fourth one is to have an expectation and a hope. That's right. Oh, uh, if you come in here and you're not expecting anything, mm -hmm. you know what you'll get? You won't get anything. Nothing. You'll get nothing if you don't expect Zero. anything. Zero. So you need to come in here with high expectations. See, when Sherry and I come, we have high mm -hmm. expectations. Mm -hmm. We're believing for the Holy Spirit to move among us because we know you have the Holy Spirit. We, we have, have the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. We want everybody to release the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit move. You, you know, it says, don't quench the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Don't, don't keep him from flowing. See, we can easily hmm. keep the Holy Spirit from flowing and quench him. He wants to move among us. That's what he wants to do. But we can quench him if we don't agree with him. Or we can just uh, uh, cross our arms and say, I don't agree with what's yeah. being said. I, I don't agree with what's being taught. And I, and just to have a sour uh, look on your face. And everybody knows, hey, you don't agree. Well, when you do that, you stop the flow of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, it's not you just affecting yourself, but you can affect all of us because we are learning together. This is a relational type of learning, a right, relational right. type of learning in which we're learning by the Holy Spirit, mm, mm. the Holy Spirit that you brought, the Holy Spirit that I brought, mm. we're releasing, and we say what the Holy Spirit wants us to say, and then you say what the Holy Spirit wants you to say. Maybe you have, will have a scripture to add to what is being said. Uh, so this is, I call it relational learning. Hmm. of in God's wisdom so that we're learning to get it's all about relations relationships very important in mm -hmm. the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and, and we learn now this is not the only way that you can learn you can go off like Paul did into the desert mm -hmm. and just spend time with the Lord until he releases you you can you can learn that way you can learn from books and you can learn by going to seminary you can learn a lot of different ways but this is the way that jesus taught this is how jesus interacted with his disciples he spent time with them he taught them principles he but but also he imparted things into their lives by the Holy Spirit. So you think about Paul, Peter and John, how mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. council were astonished 
at the confidence they had, at the courage they had, at the boldness they had. And they said, these are just ordinary men. They're not schooled. They're not trained, mm -hmm. but they have spent time with Jesus. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. that's what we want to do in these meetings. We want there to be relational learning in wisdom from above so that by the spirit of God, we're learning. We don't have to go off into the desert and, and learn on our own. And we don't have to go into a library and, and just uh, pull, uh, go over and read the books over and over again by ourselves without anybody instructing us. You see, God has a way in his body that he teaches people. He gives apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors, pastors and, and teachers. teachers. He gives the teaching gifts, the, the equipping gifts to teach people so we're not all alone. See, if everybody was alone and they all went off into the desert to learn, th then they'd come back and there would probably be a lot of chaos in, in what they had learned. And, and that that's why it's good to be in groups and to be in relationship with whom God places mm -hmm. you in relationship and learn. There's safety. Listen, yeah. there is safety in the multitude of counsel. counsel. Glory to God. So what we're saying, this is a safe place where you can come and you can ask questions and, and, and you're not going to be put down. If you uh, ask a question, you're, you're going to be encouraged. You are encouraged to ask questions. You are encouraged to comment, to make comments, to share scriptures, to share testimonies. You are encouraged in these ways. So this is what these meetings are about. This is about supernatural impartation by the Holy Spirit. This is a way to learn. This is the way Jesus imparted into his disciples. Now, he only had a short period of time to be with those disciples, about three years. Mm -hmm. and, and then he was going to go away. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole, uh, all of er his whole program and all that he was going to do was going to be on the shoulder of those 12 men. Mm -hmm. It was on the shoulder. That, what a great weight of responsibility they had. He put it all on those 12 men and they had to get it right. Can you imagine mm -hmm. if there was a big division and six of them said this and six of them said that? Uh, that that's not the way Jesus operated. He came, he had a program, he he presented it. This is the way he, he developed his uh, disciples and he left uh, glory to God, all of Christianity, yeah. all of Christianity yeah. on the shoulders of 12 men. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. It worked because it's gone to the to billions of people. And it all started with the with the effort that Jesus had to pour himself into 12 men for three years. And so that's the reason we choose this way of working with people mm -hmm. through relationships so that we can learn through relationships. We're all learning. Sherry is learning. I'm learning. You're learning. It, mm -hmm. There is no end to learning, to learning in the kingdom Again. of God. God has so much for you, and, and he wants all of us to grow up in Jesus Christ, and this is the way that we're doing it, the way we're approaching it,